Everybody in this house calls these two brothers. They are not brothers. They are boyfriends. They are in love. They are gay cats. Cats who are gay. Please scan your first item or shopper's card. Whatever is comfortable for you. No pressure. Unexpected item in the bagging area, but that's okay. You're not in trouble and nobody is angry with you. Place your bananas in the bag. Calling attendant for me, not you. You didn't mess up. I did. You did everything right. It's going to be okay. Take a deep breath and name 10 things that you can see that are blue. Place the item in the bagging area if you have enough space. There's not enough space sometimes, and that can be frustrating. Don't feel bad. You're not trauma dumping. This is a safe space. Actually, it's a safe way, but close enough. Here's a coupon that applies to your most expensive items before you actually purchase them. Payment accepted. It declined. I'll cover for you while you put back the strawberries. You saved $7 on your purchase, which is a great excuse to get a coffee. It's a small thing that makes your day better, and you should enjoy it. Please take your receipt in case they stop you at the door, which they shouldn't do because you obviously did nothing wrong. Please rate your experience or just walk away at any time. You don't have to do anything you don't want to. Your parents are the disappointment, not you. You are an amazing person. Thank you for shopping. I'm Spider-Punk for Halloween this year and here's how I made my costume. I tried thrifting at five or six different stores for the perfect leather jacket and they were all super nice and I did not want to cut the sleeves off, so I went to Rainbow. For the front, I started with a loose outline of white paint around the collar and then started slowly adding in more colors and then I added studs that I bought on Amazon. Now this is the part I was the most excited for. Um, Hobie has a ton of pins on the front of his leather vest, so I wanted to represent each Spidey. But I got these super cute pins from Redbubble. I wanted to fill in the gaps with some pins that are specific to Across the Spider-Verse, so I made some out of Shrinky Dink. I, of course, had to do Gwen and Miles, and then I decided to make the bagel. I was a little nervous to bake them, but they ended up turning out fine. They did kind of stick to each other, but I just, like, pried them open and heated them up some more. It didn't take me long to do the back of the jacket because the style is so messy. The letters stand for Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. It was so nice to completely zone out making this. I added a few more studs to the front and added each button, and they look so freaking cute. And you can see how the shrinky dinks turned out. I had to draw them pretty large because I wanted the button to be pretty large. And I think they look so great. And I actually have a ton of this left over. So I'm trying to figure out what else I want to make with these. I'm so precise when it comes to painting my jackets that it was so fun to be a little bit more messy with this one. Watch part two to see me make my guitar. I'm so OCD. I have to wash my hands every time I go to the bathroom. I have OCD, and sometimes I think about just taking a knife and going Ugh, right into my stomach. I feel like that one was kind of aggressive. I mean, I just feel that's like that's what OCD is. Like, what do you mean? Okay, what? okay, but just like a little bit less. Okay. Dark this okay, time. okay, that was a mild one, but yeah, let's go again. Okay. I'm so OCD. I have to be on time to work every day. I have OCD, and sometimes I get thoughts of throwing my cat off the balcony. Oh, okay. And so I just no. don't go mm -hmm. out. But that's Ovid. Why would you? Why would you do well, that? Well, I don't want to. I'm just saying that, like, sometimes I get like thoughts and images of doing it. Okay. Well, you just but... don't go near our okay. cat. Okay. Okay. One more time. One more time. Let's just. I'm so OCD. The toilet paper has to be clean before I'll stop wiping. I have OCD, and sometimes when I'm walking through a doorway, I feel like there's a right door to go through, and if I go through the wrong one, my family will die. Oh. Uh, so. Okay. We're we're done. We're climate activists. Of course 90% of it is a queer or neurodivergent or both. We're climate activists. Of course politicians shit talk us or they try to use us for greenwashing. We're climate activists. Of course we forget that we're adults now because the media keeps referring to us as school kids. We're climate activists. Of course we stand on the corner in minus 10 degrees. We're climate activists. Of course we thought COP28 was a massive disaster. We're climate activists. What do you mean by there's more type of food other than hummus? How come when a white person and a black person are both being equally disrespectful to each other and but the white person decides to call the black person the n-word that white person we all collectively agree that they are racist and they a piece of shit but when someone's arguing with a trans person 
and let you know the trans person they being disrespectful but the other person decides to be transphobic with their disrespect how come that person gets kudos like how come that person like y'all be like well they go low i go lower you being disrespectful i'm gonna be disrespectful like but why is that okay to attack the person being trans we agreed that the the white motherfucker saying the n-word was racist and piece of shit period they wrong but you get to call a trans woman a tranny because she said that your wig was falling off or something how the fuck is that okay bitch you still a piece of shit too you you ain't shit you ain't shit That's Teddy, and that's also Teddy. I named them all Teddy because I, I can't tell the difference. Hello, I'm an autistic child showing symptoms of autism. No, you can't show those symptoms of autism. Those are inappropriate, child. Oh, okay, I'll fix that. Hello, I learned how to hide all my symptoms of autism. What symptoms of autism? You aren't showing any symptoms. You can't possibly be autistic. You told me I had to hide the symptoms. Yeah, and I don't see any symptoms, so you're not autistic. But I showed them earlier. Yeah, those were inappropriate. So I fixed them by hiding them. And now I don't see any, so you can't be autistic. I don't know what you want from me. Hey, just double checking, you cleared your calendar for dinner tomorrow night, right? I'm dying to go to that new place, like I can't. Oh, sorry. Dinner tomorrow. Me. Yeah. I have the great displeasure of sharing with you that today in the U.S., nearly a million people are getting COVID every single day. That means nearly one in 35 people anywhere you go statistically has COVID at that point. If you're in a room of 17 people, there's about a coin flip that someone in there has COVID at that exact moment and is infectious. These are estimates from J.P. Wyland, one modeler of these numbers based on wastewater. If you don't trust this person... Here's Professor Michael Horger modeling the same data, gets about the same answer, looking like we'd peak at 2 million COVID cases per day around January 10th in the U.S. That's horrible. Now, my main reason for sharing this is just knowing the numbers, it may not match what you see in person, and here's an example why. So there's a tweet from Sinead O'Brien who says, Despite my best efforts, my husband has broken his no-COVID streak. It's important to note he is entirely asymptomatic, and was testing himself daily because he attended an indoor event. So again, uh, there's studies I've covered on my channel before. Nearly 50% of COVID infections are asymptomatic. You never feel anything. So in those stats of 1 out of 34 people have COVID this exact second, many of them are not feeling symptoms. So you can't go on this, you know, how someone feels, whether they're coughing or sneezing. There are people who feel totally fine, who are breathing virus out in the air, COVID is one of the most contagious viruses we've ever seen. Sinead goes on to say that uh, their husband attended a masked event but took a mask off to eat. And the moral of the story is masks work when they're kept on. And this is, I've seen many, many, many stories like this. COVID is so contagious that you can take your mask off just to eat for a few minutes and you will get sick then or it's very, there's a very high chance of getting sick. Repeated COVID infections are destroying us. And we're going to see it little by little over time. You know, many people have had COVID once, twice, three times. My perspective is if you've had it five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve 10, 11, 12 times, um, you are not going to be doing very well. So here's some stories from Reddit that a Twitter user Lazarus Long has compiled. This user on Twitter says, I have a friend who's had COVID nine or 10 times. They take a lot of precautions since getting long COVID from the first infection but they have a young child in school and carers, so it's hard to avoid. With each infection, or most of them at least, they've developed new symptoms and their general health baseline has fallen further. They are very much not okay, almost entirely housebound and need a high level of care. Another friend with long COVID has had five plus infections and had a similar experience. I'm not saying it happens every time for everyone, but it's grim what I've seen. Getting multiple infections can't be a good thing. Canada stat came out with a report showing that um, long COVID was more likely with every single infection. So let's put this all together. Right now, one in 35 people in the U.S. have COVID, and it, that rate will get worse in the coming weeks, probably peaking around January 10th. There are people walking around who do not feel sick and are not coughing or sneezing, but can be breathing out COVID particles into the air and getting you sick. So... 
I'm advising you to wear a mask as often as possible. I'm advising you to avoid unnecessary exposures. Don't go to a random movie. Don't just do random shit when it's the least safe time of the year. You can't keep getting COVID repeatedly. It is not healthy. It is not safe. It is eating away at all of our collective health. And for the holidays, keep your gatherings, cancel your gatherings, keep them as small as possible, crack a window, wear a mask as often as possible, ask everyone to take tests beforehand, have supplies on hand when inevitably someone in your family gets COVID from this gathering. Um, Again, just based on the peer numbers, if you don't try to avoid it, you or a family member or a friend are going to get COVID in the next several weeks. And there are ways to avoid it. It's not okay to just keep getting sick. Um, COVID is a paradigm. It's a fundamental paradigm shift. Things that worked before COVID do not work since COVID because it's really contagious and our immunity just does not last, period. So, I don't know what else to say. Is it trans or homophobic if a cis person only wants to date other cis people? I got a lot of comments asking this when I said that I was a trans person who only dates other trans people, but the answer is very complicated and nuanced because it entirely depends on what your reasoning for not dating a trans person is. Before I get into this, I want to say that I don't think you should date anyone that you don't want to date. Whatever your reasoning is, you shouldn't force yourself to date someone that you don't like because you're going to end up making yourself uncomfortable and probably hurt them even if it's unintentional. With that being said, having a genital preference or wanting biological kids are examples of valid preferences that might exclude some, if not all, trans people from your dating pool. I honestly think it's better to admit to yourself that you have those preferences rather than forcing yourself to date trans people because you're worried about being seen as transphobic. It will hurt your partner if you date them knowing you're not attracted to them or can't see a future with them. That's just a recipe for disaster. Unless, obviously, there's clear communication like you being asexual or you only wanting a short-term relationship. Now, where it would be transphobic is if you wouldn't date a trans person because you don't see them as a real boy, girl, or whatever. Don't invalidate or insult people just because you don't find them attractive. If you support trans people but wouldn't date one because of some level of incompatibility, that's fine. Just be honest with yourself and your potential partners. All of this to say that just be respectful of others. Everyone has different experiences and it's best not to jump to conclusions about their body, goals, or preferences based on a few lines of information about them. Hope this helped and have a great day. Hi, I was a black film major and if you have a second, I could use your help. Three years ago, I dropped out of my college program because of the racism I was facing at the institution and the financial strain trying to graduate was putting me in. I have been providing for myself ever since, in part by doing content creation and by working as a middle school librarian. But now, I can't even believe I'm about to say this, I have my first shot at a real screenwriting gig. I hesitate to say more about it than that, because if you know, you know, there's a chance this thing falls apart in three months, there's a chance we work on it for a year and then it falls apart anyway. Uh, Who knows? But it's a chance, it's an opportunity, uh, and I'm taking a risk and I'm relocating to maximize this opportunity. And relocating is really expensive, and working in a public school certainly does not pay a lot. So. That's where you come in. I have something insane, (laughs) like 80,000 followers on this account, 7,000 would cover my moving expenses and debts I need to clear before I leave the area where I'm living now. If each of you donated like 50 cents, I I would still clear that goal and then some. (laughs) Yeah, I majored in film and not math for a reason. (laughs) There are absolutely more important things going on in the world right now, and if that is where you're choosing to send your financial support, do it. I back you 3,000%. But a part of the reason why I never gave up on writing is, I'm about to cry, because of the community I built here. And because even after I dropped out, you guys never stopped wanting to hear what I had to say. You guys never stopped wanting to know what movies I would make if I could. Um, And hearing people say, even if it was just a joke, (laughs) that they would fund something I made just because it sounded like a good idea, I can't tell you how much that's meant to me over the past three years. Um, So thank you. And I'm sorry I'm asking you for money again.
If you're fat, you now get a free seat on a Southwest flight. This person is talking about a policy that has existed for like 30 years, but let's hear what they have to say. All you have to do is go to the customer service booth at Southwest. When you get to the airport before your flight, ask for the plus size policy. Yes, Southwest Airlines makes reasonable accommodations for passengers of size. The policy is if your body is a certain size, you can buy two seats in advance and get the second seat refunded after the flight. If you are unable to get a second seat in advance, you also have the option to ask about the policy before boarding. But if the flight is sold out, you will not get the second seat. And if the seat that you purchased isn't the proper size, Southwest will just have to put you on another flight. Sounds perfectly reasonable to me. And this allows you to get a free seat on a Southwest flight. And the overweight people will get the seat automatically next to them. Even if the plane is full, they'll kick somebody off for them to get this plus size policy. That is simply not how the policy works. Nobody has ever been kicked off a flight over this. I have scoured the internet and have not seen one person claim that this has happened to them. Now, yes, this is actually probably a smart policy for all people to be comfortable on a plane. Yes. Personally, for me, I think Southwest should find the overweight person another flight. They do. So no one gets kicked off who also paid a full price for a ticket. They don't. But I believe Southwest is going to become the overweight plane now. What does that even mean? This video got hundreds of thousands of views through rage farming, leading to engagement like these lovely comments please stop lying on the internet like this for clout it spreads hateful behavior the cats we're good again this week here are my top five. First, we have a cat named minnie who had a little case of the zoomies We have a cat that could not be less thrilled to live another 30 years. Maxwell, did you know that today it was announced that there's this shot that helps cats' kidneys so they can live to 30? <laughs> Max, that's double your. <laughs> Next up, a cat that gives us proof that brother-sister bonds will still look exactly the same across species. Demonte Isaiah! Demonte Isaiah! What did you- what you got? You got my baby in a headlock! It's just crazy to see a five-pound cat bully a 130-pound tiny corso. He came in establishing his dominance over the entire house. That's when Demonte took over. <laughs> Next, we have a savanna cat that's learned how to defy gravity. Now, some people thought a cat wall was going to train her to climb on anything. And while I haven't seen her climb the curtains, I did train her to jump up on my shoulder when we're outside. My idea is to have a safe space for her to go to when we see dogs. I did this using a clicker and treats. The first step is to relate to this click sound with being given a treat. Once they understand that, you can get them to do things like follow your finger before you click and give them a treat. The idea is to mark the exact moment they do something you want them to do. And for us, that's touching her nose to my finger. The clicker simply makes that moment more clear. When she's able to follow my finger, I sit on my couch and have her put weight onto my shoulder. The idea here is to make your shoulder a happy place that gives food. As she gets comfortable, I increase the distance she needs to reach to get the treat until she is entirely on my shoulder and eventually she's comfortable riding around on top. At this point, she'll do anything to get to my finger in hopes of getting a treat. I also taught her other tricks like high five, so let me know if you want to see. Finally, we have the age-old case of a clingy orange cat. They don't spend money uh, to commute, uh, uh, you know, they can... Go watch that video and correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like he's just admitting that the capitalist system is so fragile and so reliant on consumer spending that a sensical shift towards working from home, which would reduce the cost of living for workers because they don't have to pay for their commute, they don't have to pay premium on food, they can cook at home, would effectively crash the economy. It's more ridiculous than I've even said before. I've focused a lot on the commercial real estate aspect of working from home, but it's worse than that. 
workers are being forced back into the office in order to be forced to spend more money commuting, buying food, buying expensive clothes so that the economy can keep running. I mean, this is really the best indictment of capitalism coming from King Capitalism himself, the CEO of BlackRock. Being born with a perfect hourglass figure, blue eyes, blonde hair, nice skin, and just a symmetrical face, you didn't work hard for that. You were gifted that when you were born versus a girl that works out, keeps her body in check, in tone, physically shaping her body through exercising, that takes a tremendous amount of effort. Mm. I would argue it doesn't take as much effort as it does for a man to do the same thing because a man has to resist earth with gravity when he lifts weights. What? Because a man has to resist earth with gravity when he lifts weights. Resist Earth with gravity when he lifts weights. I'm so sorry, but I just can't, I can't, I don't care about the political theater that is the Trump trial. And every single time somebody tells me Trump would be worse, I think about the Trump trial. And the fact that even with 91 indictments, he's still allowed to run for president. And I'm supposed to believe that this is a functioning democracy? <laughs> like, come on. Like, the endless minute updates. The constant back and forth. Oh my god, Trump's lawyer filed this motion. They filed this motion. Whoa. I don't care. I really don't care. Because ultimately, it is all a performance. All of it, every little bit of it is a performance. We don't hold rich white men accountable for jack shit in this country. And I'm supposed to believe you all will now? <laughs> and I see all these profiles posting like every little bit about it. And it's like, convict him, but don't waste my time with this bullshit. Don't waste my attention on this bullshit. Am I supposed to see any of this as the machine of America working for justice? New competitive advantage just dropped. Apparently, transgender girls now have a biological advantage at, wait for it, competitive Irish dancing. That's right. This week, the conservative media ecosystem and anti-trans swimmer Riley Gaines targeted their audience on a 13-year-old trans girl for finishing first in the Southern Regional Competitive Irish Dancing Competition in Dallas, Texas. Just so that we're on the same page, I want you to take a look at this video. This is from last year's competition. So that's what we're talking about. It's ridiculous to claim that trans girls have a competitive advantage at this. The judging on this is, according to experts, done by looking at their congenial disposition, their graceful movements, and executing their moves properly. It's also notable that trans girls likely would have a disadvantage at this, because whenever you are switching from one style to another, especially one gender category to another in this particular competition, you have to learn entirely new tricks. You have to wear different clothes. That doesn't matter to them, though. We have people like Riley Gaines claiming that she stole a spot, James Lindsay calling her a trans menace, and one Irish anti-trans activist claimed that Irish dancing has fallen. Anyway, it wasn't all negative. She got a lot of support from her friends on Facebook. There were a lot of positive comments. And in fact, there has already been a petition released to support her in dance with over 2,000 signatures called Protect Irish Dancers. Trans people deserve to be able to play. This is getting ridiculous. Let me break down some math for you. Women menstruate for 10 years of their life, 3,500 days or 450 periods. During that time, they bleed the equivalent of the blood of 69 grown men. Obviously, women are born into the necessity for personal care products. 
the average cost of menstrual care products per cycle is $20. 450 periods at $20 is about $9,000, a debt that we are just born into. We have no choice. Each month, 1.8 billion women menstruate, yet more than a quarter of them have no access or can't afford menstrual care products. And poor menstrual hygiene poses severe risks and effects on women, something that we face every single month. Menstrual care products need to be free, and I will die on this hill. Loving this newly out bisexual girly who throws her bisexuality into every single conversation and goes to the salon to get by lights so you don't forget she is in fact bisexual representation. At the American Girl Store. Asmodeus, Satanas.